Proclamation Number Six Thousand Nine Hundred Thirty Five, October Fourth, Nineteen Fifty Seven. Those who love God. Those who love God will derive a benefit from everything, for God takes particularly good care of them, and if suffering and worries or harsh strokes of fate are granted to them, He will only ever use these means in order to help the soul become perfect. You humans will frequently experience that precisely those fellow human beings who make every effort to live a God-pleasing life are being afflicted by strokes of fate, and you cannot comprehend why they must suffer and struggle so much on earth. But neither do you know about their glorious fate after their death. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard. Nor have entered into the heart of man the things which I have prepared for those who love me. And God wants to prepare the soul which grants Him its love on earth for this bliss. For the soul must have reached a specific degree of maturity before it can enter the eternal splendor. That is, it must be clean and pure. It must have discarded all impurities which prevent it from entering this magnificent kingdom. Only rarely is a soul so perfected that it would need no suffering, no means of purification of any kind. Its heartfelt devotion of God and its love for Him will often be rewarded by Him in a way which you humans on earth, admittedly, cannot understand. Whereby, through suffering and adversity, He helps where the human being himself is still too weak. Yet all those afflicted by suffering shall take comfort in the fact that everything will benefit their soul as long as they only love God, and they prove their love for God through humble devotion to Him, through their will to live correctly and righteously, and by fulfilling the commandment of love for their neighbor, which also incorporates the fulfillment of love for God. Any one who loves the next person as himself has the right relationship with God. For his indwelling strength of love is God's emanation, which was only able to affect him because he loves God. No suffering should therefore dishearten that person who has already voluntarily handed himself over to God. He should only ever regard it as the evidence of God's love, who wants to help him to still mature fully during the short time on earth, in order to then be able to provide him. With an inconceivable measure of bliss, do not allow the difficulties of a stroke of fate to depress you or make you waver in your faith, for this too will have been determined by God's love and wisdom, who certainly knows what the individual still requires, who does nothing or lets nothing happen arbitrarily, but always pursues a plan which one day will also be clearly presented to you. When you have successfully completed your life on earth, you must not compare God's reign and activity to that of a human being's conduct, for even if a person is good, he nevertheless lacks the final wisdom, which is always the decisive factor for everything that God inflicts upon a person. The wisdom which is only based on God's love, and thus God also realizes the outcome a person's every experience can result in. And he aims to achieve this outcome, and it will certainly raise the state of maturity of a soul which loves God. Earthly life is only short, and you humans do not have much time left in order to enable you to leave the earth so matured that you can be granted glorious beyond measure. And in view of this, God Himself will help you by still providing you with opportunities to prove yourselves during this short time. Which you can certainly do successfully, if you humbly accept everything, always believing God only allows for that to come upon you which is helpful for you. You should not quarrel and grumble. You should not doubt His love. Your love for Him must remain the same while you submit to everything you receive from the Father's hand. For regardless of whether it is His will or merely His permission, it will always benefit the salvation of your souls. As long as you remain inclined towards him with love, otherwise his words, "I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which I have prepared for those who love him," would not be warranted. 
your love ensures that his promise will be granted. And if you have this certain and firm faith, you will also endure everything with ease. Everything will become less severe and significant, even if in the beginning it seems very difficult for you to bear. Amen.